Good morning, Holly Macri here from Instructional Tech. Today we're taking a look at Google Keep. So you might be wondering, what is Google Keep? Google Keep is a note-taking, list-creating task manager from Google. Best part, it's free. So you simply are going to be logging in with your school email. So let's jump into Google Keep and see what it looks like. We're gonna be looking at how to create and edit notes, how to organize and find your notes, and then some other pretty cool features inside Google Keep as well. So here I am inside of my Google Keep. You'll notice I have a few notes here at the top, and then as I scroll down, I have a few more notes towards the bottom. So the reason I started out using Google Keep was because I am a post-it note girl. I have post-it notes all over the place. My desk would be full, and then when I needed that note, that important note, and I needed it right now, it was somewhere in this pile of notes. So I needed a way to keep all my notes organized. I needed a way to have my notes always with me no matter where I was working. And so I had to abandon my post-it notes and find something else. So I found Google Keep. So all of these little uh, poster-like um, notes here are a replacement for one of my post-its. So let's show how easy it is to take a note. Up here at the top, you can see where it says, take a note. You can go ahead and you can put a title in here. So this is a practice note. And then here we can put all the information that we need. Okay, you can have them just in a list view. I can add bullets. Or I could even turn all of this into checkboxes to make a list. I'm someone who loves to have things crossed off in a, a note, in a checklist, and so I love these checkboxes. Um, so you can either make it simply a note, like this one is here, um, any of the words that you want, or you can create a checklist. Um, there's also some features that allow you to change what that checklist does. So notice in my note here, my checked off items stay exactly in line with where they have them. For me, that's a, that's a mental thing for me. I like to see every single thing that I've accomplished during my day. Okay. For you, if this just clogs up your space, you can have those items automatically move down to the bottom of your notes. So I'm gonna hop into my settings. I'm gonna go into settings. Right here you have the option to move checked items to bottom. If I were to click that, all my items on that list are gonna move to the bottom. Notice now they're down here. There's even a little line that separates from what's done and what needs to still be done. And these are your completed items. Okay, so I could hide those if I wanted to. Um, again, I like those to be right where I wrote them. So I'm gonna uncheck that and they'll pop back up to the top. One reason I do leave them that unchecked is because if I have a note maybe like this one, okay, where there's a, a big item and then these ones are little pieces of that larger item, I like those to stay in line. If those were to jump to the bottom, they would now be at the bottom without this label of seesaw here. So I like them to stay in line with all the rest of my items. So that's how easy it is to take a note, simply typing in this text box at the top. Um, so if you scroll through my notes, you'll notice a few different ways that things are being organized. Um, the first thing that you might notice is that there's a few notes to at the top of my keep where the others are towards the bottom. This is called pinning your notes. You can have pinned notes at the top. Um, so I always have my to-do list pinned at the top. But if I wanted another note to also be pinned at the top, I simply use this little push pin and pin it up at the top. Now I've got this new note up here pinned to the top. I can always unpin them if I wanted them to drop down to my other notes. Um, but I love having some notes up here pinned to the top. Now, I don't actually need this one up at the top, so I'm going to go ahead and unpin it. It drops back down into my other notes. You may also notice my colors. I love a good color scheme. My post-it notes that were on my desk were always in a color scheme. I always used one color for personal notes, one color for projects, things like that. And so I try to color code my notes so that when I'm, I'm just on my regular notes tab, like I am right here, I can instantly see what uh, notes are for what purpose. And so I have a few different color schemes going on. Um, this practice note we just created, 
we need to go ahead and give that a color. So let's go ahead and pretend this is a new project that I'm working on. Now I have my projects in the color of purple. You'll notice this is a project that I'm working on. And so I'm gonna color code that note to purple. So now it is also a, a project note for me and I can see what um, kind of category that fits into. I also can use labels kind of as a filter for my work. Um, over here to the left, you'll see that I have four different filters. That's what these tabs are. I've got personal notes, projects, resources that I want to share, and then just overall work stuff. Um, and so some of my notes here I haven't categorized. I don't always categorize them as I'm going. I probably should, but I don't always do it. So sometimes like once a week I'll hop in, I'll color code, and I'll categorize. So let's go ahead and put some um, labels on these notes. Now this is a to-do list, it's for work. So I'm gonna add a label. I'm gonna push the three dots in the corner. I'm just hovering over these buttons and it will tell you what those buttons are for. But those three dots almost always means more or more options. And I'm gonna add a label. So I can create a new label if I need a new one. Um, but right now this just goes under work. So I'm gonna tab that under work. And then click off. Instantly, you can see right here, I have a label on it. It pops to the bottom. That one's for work. This one's for work. If I scroll down, here's this, um, this one's white, and it's a personal note of this practice one. Let's go ahead and add a label and pretend that has a purpose. So we said that this is a project. So I'm going to check project, but I'm also going to go ahead and check work because it's both of those things, right? It's a project, but it's also a work note. So you can have things with multiple labels. Um, again, not all of these have my labels, but I just go in real quick and add some labels to those notes. So we can pin notes at the top, we can color code our notes, and then we can add labels to our notes. Now, one of the great things about adding labels to the notes is now I can go over here to the left and just choose one of these tabs. Maybe I only want to see my personal notes. I only want to see the projects I'm working on, um, resources to share, um, and then my work notes, okay? Again, these ones are pinned. So on my regular notes page, they're also pinned in my work tab. It has my other notes. And then at the bottom, it has all my archived notes. So that's how we organize our, our Google Keep. You can always search for notes as well. So if I wanted to find something for my tech ambassadors, I can search for that. And any notes that has that word ambassadors in it have now come up which is a really great way to be able to search through your search through your Google Keep, just like you would search through your Google Drive. One of my favorite features about Google Keep is that I can link my Google Keep items into my calendar with a reminder. So let's go to our practice note and let's set a reminder. I want it to remind me on a different day. I'm gonna pick the day and time. I want it to remind me on maybe Thursday um, in the morning and it does not repeat. It only needs to remind me one time and then save. Okay, now on my notes, I have a reminder here. It gives me the time. I also have a filter on the left that I can go just to my notes with reminders. And then if I open up my calendar and I refresh my page, you'll notice that on May 6th, I will now have a reminder at 8 a.m. Give it a second. <laughs> I'll now have a reminder at 8 a.m. There it is. I have a practice note, information note one. This is all that type was in there. I can mark it as done here if I needed to. So I was like, oh, thanks for the reminder. Um, I'm gonna, I can view that note or I can mark it as done. It takes it off my calendar. And then over here in my reminders, it takes it out of my reminder area. Um, it still keeps it here in my note, but it deletes that reminder for me because I've already marked it as done. Another big thing that Google Keep can do is collaborate on notes. So let's go ahead and go to my practice note and let's go ahead and add a collaborator. Um, say maybe I was going to invite, I could invite um, any employee to this. I'm just going to invite myself since it's a practice note um, and I save and it now has two of us on here. Um, you can see instantly on that note that this is a note that's been collaborated on, who you have shared it with, um, so that if you need to partner up with something, if you have a large to-do list, and you're like, hey, 
together, we need to get through this to-do list. Now you can easily add that into your note. I can see this as a great way for PLCs to keep each other accountable for inputting your data on time. We can have, hey, did you get your assessment graded? Did you get the information in? Just check these off so that we know when we're ready to come together and talk about our data. Um, things like that, what a great way to easily collaborate just on a quick um, post-it note or a quick to-do list. All right, the last thing I wanna go over is what to do with your notes when you're done with them. So there's two options and you might use them for different purposes. There's archive and then there's trash. Okay, so remember when we are in our, our labels over here, if I'm in my, my work notes, I can still see my archived notes. They're still organized. I can still have reminders on them. They can still be collaborated on, okay? As long as they're archived. Those notes aren't going anywhere. If I delete a note, it's permanently gone after seven days. So you have seven days to regret your decision before it is final. Um, you can bring them back before those seven days. But again, after seven days, you are out of luck. So let's look at what it might look like to archive those notes. So um, let's say that I don't need this note anymore. I'm just gonna go ahead and archive it. There's a button right here, easy to access archive. If I come into my archive folder, this is the one that I just got rid of. I archived it into, um, into this folder. It's still labeled with work. So if I go to my work label, it is still here. It's just under archived now. Um, you can also still search for those notes. So if I was searching for scoop, I'm like, I know I have a note about it somewhere. Here it is in my archived folder. So um, consider when you might want to delete versus archive. I might always recommend, if you're not sure, just archive it. It's not cluttering up your, your Google Keep. The only thing it's doing is taking up space on your Google Drive. So if you have a lot of things in your Google Drive and you're running out of space, you might want to go through your archived notes and decide what you could get rid of. Um, but archived is generally where I put most of my notes that I might want to see at some point again. All right, my friends, that is it. That is Google Keep in a nutshell. Um, I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you maybe found another way to help yourself stay organized with your ongoing tasks and projects. Um, make sure to leave any questions that you might have in the comments below and we'll be sure to answer them. Or we'd love to hear other ways that you are using Google Keep to make your life easier in the classroom. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.